Is there a mystery that lies behind the events that have shaken America from the storming of Capitol Hill to right now? That lies behind the forces that are transforming our nation before our eyes? What does it all mean? And where is it all heading? What does the future hold? Is there a template, a mystery from two and a half thousand years ago, that reveals what lies behind it all? This is Jonathan Kahn, and this is going to be a prophetic message of a different kind. You won't hear it on the news or from the media establishment. This right now is the first time I'm sharing it anywhere. But I believe it's going to open your eyes to a whole other realm of stunning connections that lie behind what is taking place all around us. The last prophetic video I made, the message to Joe Biden, was about 10 minutes. This one's going to be of a much more major length. But you're going to want to see the whole thing because every piece of the mystery is important. And it's going to culminate in what it means for now, what you need to know for what lies ahead. Now, the mystery is not political, but it touches the political realm and all realms. And people may seek to use it politically from any side, but it's above that. It's spiritual. Nothing in it condones what happened on Capitol Hill. As believers, we have to stand against all hatred and the violence that comes of it. Our agenda is the love of God, including manifesting it to those who oppose the agenda of God to manifest the truth in love. At the same time, people could seek to use the paradigm for the sake of attributing blame. That's not what it's about either. It's about something much bigger than any event. It's about the very course and future of America, as you'll see. Now, I've written several books, starting with The Harbinger, but after I write them, I don't often have the time to read them. But in recent days, I've looked through my first book, The Harbinger, and been seeing how what was there and warned of is coming to pass, manifesting even more clearly now. That's one of the things that led me to write The Harbinger 2, the last book. But the mystery I'm going to open up now begins in a different book that I wrote called The Paradigm. And what I'm going to show you is not in the book, but it's the continuation of the mystery that begins in the book. So let's set the foundation. The paradigm is not a prophecy, but a prophetic template. It's not saying that the scriptures prophesy the leaders of our day, but that in the scriptures are templates that can replay and that God can use those templates to speak and give revelation. The template of the paradigm concerns a nation, ancient Israel, that once knew God, but is now rapidly falling away from him and heading ultimately for judgment. America is also a nation that once knew God and is now rapidly falling away from him. And the warning is that its course ultimately leads to judgment. The paradigm contains specific ancient prototypes that lie behind modern leaders on the national stage of our time. I won't name the ancient kings or queens of the paradigm except one, the one that involves Donald Trump. But the first king from ancient Israel is a divided man who knows of God but leads the nation in apostasy from God. He's going to be linked to a culture war in his nation and it's going to accelerate his country's fall from God. The ancient king will be the prototype of President Clinton, who will be the antitype. The ancient king's reign was known for scandals, so too the Clinton presidency. Bill Clinton entered the national stage as governor in 1979. His presidency ended in 2001, so his time on the national stage was 22 years. The ancient king in the Bible, his prototype, was on the national stage for 22 years. The ancient king was unique in that he ruled in a co-regency with his wife, the queen. The ancient queen was even more committed to carrying out an anti-biblical agenda. She championed a religious practice and worship of Baal that involved the killing of little children. So the Clinton presidency was also unique in that observers labeled it a co-presidency of Bill Clinton and his wife, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton championed an anti-biblical agenda involving the killing of little children, abortion. She was hailed by the abortion industry as the abortion champion of the century. In the 19th year of the ancient king's time on the national stage, a scandal breaks forth in his administration. In the 19th year of Clinton's days on the national stage, starting in 1979, it comes out to the year 1998. The chief scandal of the Clinton presidency surfaces in the year 1998, the 19th year. 
Clinton's time on the national stage began specifically in the month of January 1979. The scandal breaks out specifically 19 years later in January of 1998. In the paradigm, three years after the King scandal, his reign comes to an end. Clinton's presidency ends in 2001 on January 20th. Go back three years and it leads you to January 20th, 1998. January 20th, 1998 is the very night the scandal breaks out, three years to the exact day. In the paradigm is another mystery. The ancient king actually voices repentance temporarily for his sins. Three years after he does that, a calamity comes on the nation. Clinton also voiced repentance for his sins. It happened in a White House gathering. Three years after that day comes out to the day, September 11, 2001. The day that calamity comes upon America. And it pinpoints it to the morning of September 11th, to the very hours of the calamity. Now, after the end of the ancient king's reign, his queen, or the former first lady, continues on the national stage. She continues to inhabit the political realm and dwells in the capital city. So Hillary Clinton follows the ancient prototype and continues after her husband's presidency to inhabit the political realm and the national stage and to dwell in the capital city. She continues as a champion of abortion. Now, in the paradigm and in the book of Kings, in the Bible, another king rises up, an ancient king who will continue in the ways of the first king, leading the nation away from God. He'll be the prototype and the mystery behind Barack Obama. Obama comes onto the national stage in the Democratic Convention of 2004, suddenly. And he'll be sworn into his first national office in January 2005. His time will end at the end of his presidency on the national stage, with his last year being 2016 and his leaving office in January 2017. How many years Obama on the national stage? 12 years. The ancient king, his prototype, was on the national stage for 12 years. Joining that ancient king in the palace was the former first lady. So joining Barack Obama in the White House was the former first lady, Hillary Clinton, as secretary of state. Now then comes a change. Now I'm sharing the foundation that's in the book, The Paradigm, and I'm only giving a nutshell. There's so much more. But then comes a change in the template. There comes the rise of an unlikely man. He's going to be the prototype behind Donald Trump. His name is Jehu. Jehu is different from the others. He's not a politician. He's not of the royal house. He's a fighter. So is Trump. Jehu is wild, impetuous, unpredictable. So is Trump. Jehu begins a race to the throne. He's described, it, it's described in the Bible as a crazy. He's driving the chariot crazily. Well, so was Trump's race to the White House. In the midst of his race to the throne, Jehu makes an alliance with the religious conservatives of the land. So did Trump. Specifically, Jehu invites a partner into his chariot, into the race. His name is Jehanadab. He's a, a, a holy man known for his piety and abstinence. So Donald Trump will invite a man known for his faith, his piety, and abstinence to be his partner in the race, Mike Pence. Jehu comes to power in the 12th year of the previous king's reign, the prototype of Barack Obama. So Trump rises to power in the 12th year of Obama's time on the national stage, specifically to January 2017, the time of his inauguration. Then comes a showdown. Jehu versus the nation's former first lady, the former queen. So there comes a showdown in America. Trump versus the nation's former first lady, Hillary Clinton. Now it looked as if Clinton would win the election, but the paradigm says that when the two come head to head, The queen, the former first lady, will fall and Jehu, the warrior, will prevail. And that's exactly what happened. Now, how long was Hillary Clinton on the national political stage? 22 years with her husband, then 12 years in Washington on her own. For two years, she retired from public life. Then she came back to run for two more years. So 22 years with her husband and 14 years on her own. What about the ancient queen in the Bible, her prototype? The ancient queen was on the nation's political stage with her husband, 22 years, and then on her own, 14 years. Now, Jehu comes to the capital city to reign. 
He has an agenda to drain the swamp. He comes against the worship of Baal, which means he opposes the killing of children. He cuts off state support for the cult of Baal. So Trump comes to the capital city, Washington, with the agenda to drain the swamp. He will oppose and seek to cut off state support for the killing of children, abortion. The reign of Jehu represented a reprieve, a holding back of the forces that were impelling the nation's apostasy and fall from God. And that is the significance of the presidency of Donald Trump. It's not about Donald Trump any more than it's about Jehu. But it was to hold back the forces impelling America's fall from God. Now, when Jehu came to the capital city, he destroyed the temple of Baal. When Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls to the ground. The American Jehu, Donald Trump, began his rise in the summer of 2015 when he declared his candidacy. Now, it turns out there actually has existed a temple of Baal, an ancient temple of Baal in Palmyra, Syria surviving 2,000 years of world history. The rise of the modern Jehu begins in the summer of 2015. Two months later, the ancient temple of Baal, after 2,000 years, falls to the earth. When Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. Now, there's much more in the paradigm that we can't go into. But now we're going to see the mystery of the paradigm take us to the present day and to what's not in the book and that I've never shared. In the days of Jehu, the temple of Baal was in the nation's capital city. It was its capital temple. Could there also be a building in America that would answer to it? In America, we don't have national temples as such except one. We have one building that's literally called America's temple. It stands in the nation's capital and is called the Capitol Building. It's the temple of the American Republic. In its very halls is a quote spoken soon after the Capitol building was completed. It says this, We have built no national temples, but the Capitol. In other words, the Capitol building is America's national temple. Since then, and to this day, it's been referred to as America's temple, the people's house, the temple of democracy, a secular temple. Not only that, but it was modeled after the temples of the ancient world, the ancient pagan temples of Greece and Rome, and particularly the Roman pantheon, the temple of all gods. Now, it's not that the Capitol building is by nature pagan. Its architecture is, but what matters is what goes on inside. What happens inside a nation's temple when the nation turns away from God? What took place in the ancient temple of Baal? Prayers were lifted up to a pagan god. Now, in the Capitol building, prayers are traditionally lifted up to God, the God of the Bible. But as 2021 began, something happened. On Monday, January 4th, the first, the inaugural working session of the new Congress of the new year, there was offered up a prayer. Now, when I wrote the paradigm a few years before, I actually mentioned the man's name who would now lift up that prayer. He sanctified the new Congress in the name of a God that he called Brahma. Brahma is not the name of the God of Scripture. Brahma is a foreign God, the four-faced God of Hinduism. Brahma is a pagan God. So in 2021, the new Congress was opened up in the name of a pagan God. A prayer to a pagan God is what takes place in a pagan temple. One more piece to the puzzle. What else took place in the ancient temple of Baal? The worship of Baal involved an anti-biblical morality. It involved sexual immorality, the persecution of God's people, and, as we saw, the sacrificing of children. The same week when the American Congress was consecrated on Capitol Hill in the name of Brahma, a pagan god, it was the week that something else took place. It was the week that concerned the taking over of the government, the White House, and the Capitol by a political party, by the Democratic Party. It was coming to power bearing the most radical agenda in the history of that party or of any major party in the history of America. The most radical anti-biblical agenda. An agenda that as with the Temple of Baal contained sexual immorality being enshrined, the oppression of God's people, the encroaching of religious liberty in the form of the Equality Act and other legislations and the killing of the unborn as it had never been championed before. 
as in the proposed striking down of the Hyde Amendment. So every American could now become complicit in the act of murdering the unborn, that its hands, that all of its hands would be covered with blood. The American government would virtually become a representative of Planned Parenthood, the modern-day priests of Baal. So now the Capitol building was going to become a vessel of the agenda of Baal, as in the Temple of Baal. And the critical week was that first week in January 2021, where it would determine which party would lead the Senate and then would officially confirm who would sit in the White House. So it all began with the prayer to a pagan god. The day after that prayer, Tuesday, January 5th, came the vote in Georgia, which would determine who would control the Senate and if the radical agenda would take total control over Capitol Hill. And so it happened. The Democrats and that agenda would take control of the American government. The Capitol building would be in the charge of those who swore to champion and expand abortion, the killing of unborn children across the land. Thus, the Capitol building would become a vessel to legislate the blood of the unborn. And thus, a temple of Baal, inaugurated with a prayer to a pagan god and sealed with this agenda. The day that the results came in as to who would control the government, the Congress, the day it was sealed and announced was Wednesday, January 6th. Remember that day. It was the first time that such a radical agenda came to full power in the American government, a temple of Baal, while a Jehu was still in power. Trump, a Jehu. It all converged on that day, January 6th. And another convergence, January 6th, was the date that another vote would take place on Capitol Hill that would confirm the taking of the White House by the Democratic candidate. It all converged on that one day, January 6th. And the next mystery of the paradigm began, which lay behind an event that shocked America and the world. Now remember, what I'm about to share is the revelation of a template not to assign values or judgments, but to show you how the ancient template replays and what it ultimately means. The mystery I opened up in the paradigm now continues. 1 Kings 10 records that Jehu, King Jehu, calls for an assembly in the capital city to gather the people there. It's actually a trick to get the priests of Baal into the temple of Baal and then to act against it. The template means that Jehu will call for people from all over the nation to come to an assembly in the capital city. So the American Jehu, Donald Trump, calls for an assembly, calls for people from all over the nation to come to the capital city just as Jehu did. Now that day, the template is going to manifest in two ways and two gatherings. One is that gathering called for by the president. The other is... It's going to take place inside America's temple in the gathering convened by law of leaders. Now, who is it that gathers inside the temple in the paradigm? It's written in the book of Kings. Now, therefore, call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. The leaders of Baal in modern America, that answer to those who promote and advance the killing of children and an anti-biblical morality. Now, in America's temple that day in the capital building, those who ascended to power were those who championed that agenda of Baal. Not all of them were, but those who ascended to power were of the agenda of Baal, the Democratic Party at that moment. The ancient paradigm is going to center on two sets of people. The priests and worshipers of Baal gathered inside the national temple, the capital building, now in control, and the other, those who support Jehu, who follow his leading. In the template, Jehu goes to the temple of Baal. On January 6th, it was to culminate with the American Jehu, the president, going to the Capitol building. That was the plan. He would, he would end up going to the White House and watching the rest, but that was the plan and that was what was announced that day. In the biblical template, Jehu's partner, the pious religious conservative Jehonadab, he goes into the Capitol building, the Capitol temple. And interesting, though he must have left it, he must have left the temple, the text doesn't record him specifically leaving. On January 6th, the American... Jehu's partner, the vice president, Michael Pence, known for being a pious man, a religious conservative, enters into the Capitol building, and he's going to stay there throughout the day and night. In the template, it will end up that both Jehu's opponents and loyalists will be in that house, in the Capitol temple, and will come into conflict or battle there. So Jehu convened a gathering in the capital city to set something in motion. 
Trump convened an assembly in the capital city and it set something in motion. And the center of the template is the Capitol Temple. The account continues, Jehu appoints a multitude of men to come to the temple to stand outside the building while a convocation is taking place inside the temple of Baal with the priests of Baal. So on January 6th, the American Jehu appoints a multitude of mostly men to come to the American temple, the Capitol building, to stand outside the building while a convocation is taking place on the inside. In the template, those who stand at the temple on the orders of Jehu and who will be central in the events that are about to take place are men of violence. On January 6th, it was certainly not all, but among those central in the events that took place were people of violence. Among the more well-meaning who came to Washington that day would be people belonging to militias and, and supremacist groups and more, whose ways have nothing to do with the children of God. So in the ancient template, inside the Capitol Temple, a convocation is taking place involving the priests and worshipers of Baal. In the midst of the proceedings and rituals, while a multitude is standing outside waiting, so in America, inside the building, proceedings are taking place. They're going to seal and hand the presidency to an agenda of Baal. In the midst of the proceedings and rituals, and outside the building stand a multitude of men, mostly men, in waiting. In the template, Jehu gives orders to the men outside the building. On January 6th, it was Trump who gave the multitude orders to go to the Capitol and make its presence known. This is not to assign intentions or blame on one hand or condone it on the other. But this is the ancient template. Jehu gave orders, as did Trump, and multitudes approached the Capitol building. This is how Jehu makes war. In the template in 2 Kings chapter 10, Jehu gives the order. His words specifically are, go inside. So they go inside and they lay siege to the temple of Baal. On January 6th, the words of the ancient template take effect, go inside. And the multitudes go inside the capital. They overpower the guards, they break open the doors, and they go inside. In the ancient template, the followers of Jehu enter into the temple and they interrupt the proceedings. On January 6th, the multitude breaks into America's temple and interrupts the proceedings. In the ancient template, the men of violence go inside and shed blood. They go there to kill, and they do. In what took place on Capitol Hill, there were those chanting calls for murder and bloodshed, and those who appeared ready to commit it, and though there was some bloodshed, thankfully much more bloodshed was avoided. In the ancient template, Jehu's men go inside the temple and cause destruction. So was destruction caused that day in America's national temple. In the ancient template, the men of Jehu specifically desecrate the temple of Baal. Now amazing, listen to the quotes that came out of this day. The incoming Senate majority leader said this about the Capitol Hill uh, takeover. This temple to democracy was desecrated. A United States senator spoke that night from the Senate floor and said, this is a sacred place. This sacred place was desecrated by a mob today. This temple to democracy was defiled. The Speaker of the House said this, to those who engage in the gleeful desecration of this our temple. Everybody kept saying the temple and desecration. Well, that's in the biblical template. Even the president of France spoke that day of the Capitol building as America's temple and the desecration of the temple. So here's the biblical template. Jehu comes against the temple of Baal. Jehu rises, the temple of Baal falls. Now I told you of the ancient temple of Baal that stood in Syria for 2,000 years. And right after Trump announced his rise to the presidency, it fell to the earth. The power and reign of Jehu is linked to the temple of Baal and an attack on the temple. But now a secret hidden in America's temple on Capitol Hill. It's not only been noted that it's modeled after the ancient pagan temples of Rome and Greece, but that part of America's temple is actually modeled after another ancient temple, the Temple of Baal. And not only the Temple of Baal, but the same Temple of Baal that stood in Palmyra, Syria, that fell with the rise of Donald Trump when it began. Its form, that its form is actually embedded in the walls of America's temple. One more mystery of the template before I come to what it all means. The numbers of those arrested concerning what happened there that day 
would of course change in the days and weeks ahead as people would be searched for throughout the whole nation and arrested. So the numbers would grow. But it was the day after the takeover of the Capitol building that the initial arrests had been made and were announced to the world. The Washington police announced the number of those who had been arrested from that attack and surrounding that attack. And I'm reading from the headlines. In total, the Metro Police Department has reported 80 arrests since this week's civil unrest began. And, and, and then it goes, another says 80, another headline, 80 arrested for civil unrest at U.S. Capitol around uh, D.C. Metropolitan, here's more, Metropolitan P- Police Department arrested 80 individuals in connection with civil unrest at the U.S. Capitol and around D.C. 80 people connected in some way to the template of Jehu and the Temple of Baal. Now let's go back to the actual paradigm. What does it say? I'm reading the scripture that speaks of the people who stormed the Temple of Baal. Now Jehu had appointed for himself 80 men. 80 men. 80, the exact same number. Jehu appointed 80 men. It goes on to wait on the outside of the temple and then he says to the 80 men, go inside. Now, of course, there were more people, but the very fact that the template, the signs of the template manifest in the exact same number, the paradigm is replaying. Now, Jehu would ultimately have men inside the temple as well. He, he had to have men go inside before the rest came in to prepare the attack. So on Capitol Hill that day, there were people inside the Capitol, America's temple, that were fighting for Trump's election and against the movement of the proceedings.